within the Makadikadi system, there are, give or take, somewhere between 15 and 20,000 zebras. This makes them the largest single species within the system. It's the second largest mass migration of zebras within Africa. The first being the Serengeti, where there's a few hundred thousand. So the zebras within the Makadikadi largely move, stay within the Makadikadi system, moving from the Bateti River in the west during the dry season. And then as the rains come, they're able to move out towards the salt pans to graze in the lush open grasslands. They move across the system constantly. They're, they're never stationary. They're always moving, looking for fresh grazing, looking for fresh water resources. Zebras are a notoriously quite a skittish species. They're a herd animal. When one individual reacts, the herd responds. So within the Makarikari system, the zebras are the most important species. They're the keystone species. They provide food for lions. The lions killing zebras provides carrion, carcasses for brown hyenas, for jackals, for vultures. Um, they also open up grazing resources for wildebeest and for springbok. And they're just the largest species moving across the Makarikari and driving the ecosystem. The research, Makadikadi zebra research, was started in 2001 in response to a plan to build a fence along the western and southern borders of the Makadikadi, um, along the line of the Bateti River. The fence was being built to help resolve human-wildlife conflict that was prevalent in the area. Um, lions were getting out of the side of the park and killing cows. Cows were coming into the park and eating, grazing through the areas that zebras were and wildebeest were requiring. Um, so the project focused on the zebras as the driving force of the system to understand what it is that, that what it is that they require, how they're able to survive out here. Because the Makarikari is a very harsh and arid environment. To understand the zebras, there are a number of zebras collared within the Makarikari population. We put the collars on so that we can collect GPS data from the collars, which allows us to look at their spatial movement over time in a much more detailed fashion at a l later by looking through on the computer and how they're using the system. The, the fence was built with all the best intentions to create an artificial boundary to the park so that livestock wouldn't be able to come in and lions etc wouldn't be able to go out and hopefully reduce the, the conflict. Um, there was obviously the fear that of the unknown. I mean, who knows exactly what impact the fence is going to have. Fortunately, it appears over time that the fence has had a very positive effect and they've been able to, to thrive. The population is doing incredibly well at the moment.